Nursk was Bastrum, a small but ancient religion with several curious but inoffensive practices. He would break for the innocent, avoid boiled cabbage, and say the word Thorp when confronted by a cow or leopard. On holy days, he would wear the sacred horns of Truski. Gnersk had a son, Biff, who had been brought up Bastrum, although he sometimes succumbed to his taste for cabbage. Biff did wear the sacred horns of Truski, which was okay, since his pals thought they were kind of retro, but cool. In particular, Griselda McDugan thought Biff was rather attractive. Now, Gnersk worked in a balloon factory, which made every known type of balloon. He specialized in the expensive, hand-blown balloons, and he managed to inflate more than any other employee, despite the fact that on holy days, his horns would undo some of his good work. One day, Gnerst entered another part of the plant while wearing his horns. The boss was very upset. You're a good worker, Gnersk, but these horns, they're a nuisance. Get these horns out of here. Gnersk's ancestors had sacrificed their lives for these horns and he demanded his right to wear them on religious grounds. While Gnersk protested, his son Biff was having his own problems. At Biff's high school, the principal had just proclaimed a new dress code. Item number three was no weird headgear. Nonetheless, the next holy day, Biff came to school wearing the horns. Griselda McDugan, knowing what Biff would do, went to school with a homemade set of horns in support. Both Biff and Griselda were sent home. And so Gnersk, Biff and Griselda all went to court to battle for their rights. The judge, after hearing extensive arguments from all sides, stated, we have a charter of rights that protects religious freedom, but that protection is not absolute. The safety of the workplace creates a reasonable limit to the free expression of a religious belief. In other words, in the balloon factory, no more horns. Biff, on the other hand, won his case. There was no overriding issue such as safety. The horns were no more dangerous than a fountain pen. An arbitrary school rule was not a sufficient cause to limit the free expression of a religious belief. As for Griselda, you are not Bastrunk. Freedom of expression would indeed protect your one day of protest. But after Biff has won his case, you would be wearing the horns simply for style. That's a freedom you may express elsewhere, but not in school. The principal realized he had made an error in judgment. And both Biff and Griselda returned to school. Gnersk's faith overcame his despair and his lung power brought him a new career where safety wasn't a factor. Biff 
admired his father's conviction, and once again forswore boiled cabbage. Moreover, he was so impressed by Griselda's support that he asked her to the school prom. We have no pious tomes or pompous incantations to determine our decisions. Only the soft voice of reason by which we find balance among the vital, yet sometimes inconsistent rights we enjoy. And if you can't win everything, sometimes you can win the best thing. <laughs>